everything in space is spinning. The planets orbit around the sun, and the sun itself orbits around the centre of our galaxy, and no doubt our galaxy is orbiting about something else. Well, what causes these orbits, these circular or elliptical paths around different objects? That's gravity. It's always gravity. And gravity attracts anything with mass to anything else with mass. Okay, so we're going to do some modelling of, um, of gravity using this model here. This is a uh, like lycra sheet which is um, stretched over a hula hoop. And we're going to use this mass to represent the sun. You see, when I put the sun into our model, well, the lycra stretches. And that is like our plane of gravity. The closer you are to that mass, the more force you're going to experience from gravity. So I'm going to use a ping pong ball just to actually model an object that's going around the, um, the sun, that's orbiting around the sun. And I want you to notice just a couple of things first. If it's quite a distance away from the sun, it will move around in a circular path, or roughly circular path, and it will move around quite slowly. But if it's really quite close to that object, the sun, then it's going to move much more rapidly and actually it's going to take less time to get one full rotation around. And the closer it is, the more force of gravity it experiences, so the shorter that orbital period, which is the name we give to the time it takes to go once around the sun. So further away from the sun, the longer a year is. Closer to the sun, the shorter a year is. Mercury has the shortest year in our solar system, and Pluto has the longest year in our solar system. I'm going to talk about a different star now, or a different solar system, because I'm going to add more mass. I'm going to talk about a star which has twice the mass to our sun. Now I have two kilograms in the center of my gravity plane, and that is a model of a larger star. So now if I take an object hopefully you can see that same radius around the outside, that same orbit around the outside, now takes much less time. Still the same rule though, the closer it is, the shorter the orbital period is. I'd just like to talk about one more thing. I'd like to talk about elliptical orbits, or eccentric orbits we sometimes call them. For example, the orbit of a comet. Comets don't have very circular orbits. They have like oval orbits. And importantly, notice what happens as the, the object moves closer and then further away from the sun. Do that one more time for you. Hopefully you could see that the closer into the sun it was, the more force it was experiencing from the sun, and therefore the faster it was going. That's all you really need to know about orbits and comets. Thank you very much. I'd like to challenge you to make a map or a model of the solar system. It's a very difficult challenge because it's almost impossible to keep everything in scale. If you do want to go, then, then make sure you post a little comment below to tell us how you did. Maybe you can post a picture or a video of how you made your model. This map, well, the orbits are in scale. These circles are all the orbits of all the different planets in the solar system around the sun, that's at the very centre. But even on this you can't really tell that Earth's orbit, which is the third planet out, is this size here. And there are two planets within Earth as well, closer to the sun than that. So, and you can't really see that object just there is Earth. Because I have kept the planets in scale with each other, although they're nowhere near in scale with the actual entire gulf of space that our solar system um, takes place in. Then, just outside of Earth, there is the orbit of Venus. Pardon me. Mars. And outside of that, here's the orbit of Jupiter. and then Saturn. Now, as I've said, the further away from the Sun you get, the longer these orbits take. 
And actually, Jupiter's orbit is more than 10 times the orbit of Earth. Mars takes twice as long as Earth, a little bit less than twice as long as Earth. Jupiter takes 10 times as long to get around. This is the orbit of Neptune here. Very, very, very large orbit. And even in your lifetime, Neptune will not have got anywhere near once around the Sun. This final or orbit here is Pluto. And Pluto takes almost 250 years, 250 Earth years to get around the Sun. Because we would say that Pluto's year is actually 250 times our year. And Pluto is not the only dwarf planet, as I hope you'll have found out by now. There are four others that we know about. And there may be many more beyond that, all of them having much longer years than that. And maybe you can see from these shapes of rings one of the reasons why we talk about downclassing Pluto from a planet to now being called a dwarf planet. I want to just draw your attention to two more objects in, a, in our solar system, and there are many more than this, orbiting the Sun as well. This one here is the orbit of a comet. It's a comet that we haven't seen in quite a while here on Earth. It takes quite a long time to get around the Sun and back out, and it goes much faster close to the Sun and slower further away than sun, from the Sun. This final orbit here that I want to show you, this is Halley's Comet. Halley's, Halley has an orbital period, an orbit time, if you like, of 75 years. Once every 75 years, Halley is visible in the skies from Earth. And I really hope to see it once, at least in my lifetime.